Hey now. Hello, everybody. Hopefully everybody is doing well today. I'm doing pretty good. Back with you again at nice and sunny 1 p.m. instead of 8 p.m. Eastern. So like I said, we're changing times officially now. Um, I will make sure to update the channel, like art and things like that to reflect it pretty soon. All right. It looks like it's starting right up, which is perfect. Um, so how is everybody doing today? Let me know in the chat while we're just getting things warmed up. I always want to make sure that everything is working appropriately before we begin or else it will be a giant, giant disaster. All right. We're going to start here in just a minute. I uh, just want to say hello really quick to Jeremy. Uh, back once again, we got Scott here. Uh, Dodget, I believe. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. I'm awesome at piano. They say thank you very much. Hey, Timmy. Don't call me Timmy. <laughs> I don't I don't really care if you do, but I'd prefer Tim. Um, okay. And he's doing well, says Jeremy. Okay, great. And then everybody else, um, I will say hello to you. Um, Jace is here and the bird 101 and Pratt Yusha once again. Um, so if I miss you after this little intro, um, I'll probably say hello to you once the main part of the lesson's done. I just kind of want to get into things today so um just give me like less than a minute or so what i want to do is i want to make sure i have my notes up everything's ready to go and then um, i'm also going to start up the facebook stream so um just give me less than a minute or so and we'll be ready feel free to say hello in the chat if it's your first time here or if you are a returning student all right just one minute Hello everybody, your piano teacher Tim here, and today I'm going to be teaching you some tips and exercises on how to improve your piano finger speed. If it's your first time here, if you're on Facebook, make sure you like our page. I guess that's the thumbs up, eh? And uh, if you are watching on YouTube, make sure you like the video, you are subscribed to the channel, and you have all notifications turned on because new lessons are coming out all the time, and what? You don't want to miss a beat okay so just give me a second here i'm going to do like a formal intro and then we're just going to get right into the lesson here um all right hey students your piano teacher tim here and you're probably wondering how do i get my fingers faster on the pieces that i'm playing well today i have some tips and exercises that'll help you out Okay, I'm going to check in real quick with the chat only because I want to make sure that everything is good to go here. Everything seems good. Let me know if there's a problem with the audio or video. Um, okay, and this is working pretty well. All right, we're ready. Let's see what we got here. Okay, we're going to start out with two tips I have for you right off the bat for getting better finger speed. And one of them is making sure that your posture is good, um, that you're sitting comfortably at the piano, you're not too tense in the arms, and you have your fingers curved. Failing to have your fingers curved, having flat fingers, actually extends the muscles in your hands, and it makes it actually more difficult to play. Um, when you have curved fingers, you can play up and down a lot faster and a lot more effectively. So very, very important. Okay, tip number two is you want to develop um, proper finger technique. Now, one of the ways you can do this is by learning scales, but what I actually recommend you do is go through your music and write down the finger fingering that works for you. And the main goal behind the whole thing is to not run out of fingers. So let me show you a quick example. All right, hold on, folks. All right, here we go, oops, all 
Oh, there we go. Sorry, a little mishap there. Um, okay. Okay, so Sam reading through this piece of sheet music. And um, now I've played this piece, this is Moonlight Sonata, tons of times. But what you want to do, you want to start writing out, you know, what fingers are hitting where. So five and one there, two and four. Because the thing is, is if I use any fingering here at all, or just like any one that I make up on the spot, it may make my hand uncomfortable. It may just be impossible to play. So make sure that you're actually writing in the finger numbers on your sheet music specifically through those tough areas. Okay, on to some exercises I'm going to show you on how to improve your piano finger speed and apply the two tips I gave for you um, to these exercises to make them work the way they're supposed to. All right, here we go. All right. Okay, I'm just looking through my notes, making sure we cover everything pretty good. Okay. Oh, oh. You know what? Quick number... T <laughs> Sorry. Quick tip I have for you, um, in addition to the two I gave you, so I guess it's three. Sorry, I just forgot. Is to use a metronome to slowly increase your speed. Now let's get on the exercises and I'll show you how that fits in. Actually, you know what? Hold on. I got a metronome right here, it just occurred to me. Just a quick thing I forgot to mention is uh, a third tip for you is to use a metronome to basically keep the time with your playing. And what you can do is you can slowly increase the tempo throughout time. So, sorry, no, it's really obnoxious. But basically I can set it slow um, if you have a mechanical one. Oh, that pulled off. That's not good. <laughs> it's always fun to do these things live. So what I recommend you do is start out slow on the metronome, see if you can play through it at that slow speed, and then it gradually increase it. But I'm going to show you in relation to the exercises, I'm going to show you right now. All right, here we go. So I'm going to set this aside so we can use it, because I know a lot of us aren't used to using one of those. So um, let me just keep that to the side. Okay, let me bring up... This next thing, it should just take a second or two. And then one thing, if you're wondering, um, if you're new here, what happens is I will take this lesson and over the week edit it to cut out all the additional parts. So if you want like a, a pure edited version down with no nonsense, make sure to check out next week when those the edited versions will be out, just to let you know that in case you're new. Uh, all right, here we go. We're ready. Okay, the first type of exercise is obviously scales. And I mentioned many times before on the channel that scales are a great way to get used to, you know, playing your hands in sync and getting simple finger crosses down. But they're also good in developing, um, developing a method to getting faster finger speed. So what you do is you get your metronome out and you set it to a manageable tempo, um, you can actually find, if you Google metronome, you can get a digital one there for free. But anyway, you set your metronome, that might be a little slow for me. And each of these is gonna be each note that you're gonna play along with. Here, and then let me set it on a flat surface because it will not work otherwise. So here we go. And that first ding, is beat one. So I'm going to start on that. Four.
And then once you can manage it at that speed, what you do is you speed up the metronome a little bit. If you're on a mechanical one, you pull it down a little bit, um, and then you start it up again. So now it's considerably faster. And obviously I can manage it at that speed, so what do I do? After you can play through it successfully, I would say two times at that speed, just to make sure that the first time wasn't a fluke, you increase it gradually some more. So the whole thing, and this applies to all the exercises I'm going to show you after this one, is you want to um, master at a certain speed and then increase it a little bit, master at that speed, increase it, and eventually you'll get them faster and faster. Oops. Wait, is this five? Wait, hold on. I think something's weird with the metronome. Hold on a second. Two, three, four, one, two. There you go. And then once you get really good, you increase it. I'm going to increase it by quite a bit here. like that and then you can even do two notes for every click you want to double speed it hold on it stopped dinging and clicking I don't know what happened that's not good <laughs> that mechanical one since we haven't really talked about it ever. And I wanted to show you a little bit easier. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure this out later. Something's, something's weird about it. Cause, yeah, that's not good. Oh, you know what, you gotta, sorry for the, Oh, that's weird. It has like a wind-up thing on the side. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now, and we're going to get on with the lesson. All right, let me check in with the chat super quick, make sure everything is up. Yeah, everything seems to be pretty good. Um, does this just come with experience? Yes. True. Like everything with piano, you got to practice it over and over until you get there. Okay, um, on to the next thing. Let me just bring it up. Here we go. Okay, the next type of exercise that's really useful in increasing your piano finger speed is, are rather, um, Hannon exercises. Now, these are similar to scales in that you have a repeated pattern between both hands, and you basically just play that pattern and move it up one note each time up the keyboard. And each exercise has a different type of pattern working out a specific part of your hand. But the cool thing about it is, once again, you can set the metronome to these um, so that you can um, play them along with it and gradually increase your tempo. The way it works is exactly the way I showed it before, where you get your metronome, you put it to a slow tempo, and then you see if you can play it at that speed, and then once you can play it at that speed, you do that. So the metronome is a really, really important part of the strategy today because without it um, your internal clock you may be um, you may be speeding up and slowing down at times without noticing it the other uh, additional benefit to the metronome is it allows you to gradually increase your speed because what will happen with a lot of students a big mistake the number one mistake in all music by the way is what playing too fast this will help mitigate that problem Okay, let's get on to the next exercise. Perfect. All 
All right, here we go. It's going to make me wait 15 seconds, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to make good use of our time. Okay, if you're liking the lesson so far, you're finding it helpful, smash that like button. It helps other students know. Oh, man, the allergies got me. Sorry. <laughs> let, me, let me do a retake of that. You're finding the lesson helpful so far make sure you smash that like button because it lets other students know that this is a quality lesson that they can learn from as well okay on to the next exercise here we go all right now we're now we're cooking another great set of exercises that you can use to increase your piano finger speed are chair knee exercises, specifically the school of velocity exercises. Let me give you a nice zoom in here of what these are about. So as you can see, you have chords in your left hand, scale patterns in your right hand. Now, um, each exercise will kind of change that up. Like exercise number two here, wherever it is, here you go, has now chords kind of in your left right hand where you have um, scale patterns in your left hand. So each exercise does a great job at changing things up, working out different parts of your hand, different sorts of techniques. And once again, um, these are great because these are more in line with what you'll see in real pieces because pieces often have scale patterns in these chords. Um, so you want to practice these again with what? The metronome. You want to set it really slow and then play through on that. Now keep in mind that these are 16th notes. So how many of them will be in each click with the metronome? Four, right? Since you know each click and beat on the metronome is a beat. So you have four in each one. So keep that in mind that you won't be going super slow. It's in fact pretty fast even at the slower tempos. And then you want to gradually Increase your tempo each time like I showed you. I think you get the idea. So work on those exercises. I think that that's going to be a great way to start. And then what you want to do after that is you want to start applying the same thing to the pieces you're playing. I don't recommend um, so much increasing your tempo right away on your pieces. Get used to these exercises first because you want to be concentrating just on the finger speed, getting those finger crosses right. Um, because those will actually carry over into a lot of the pieces that you're playing. All right, everybody. Um, let me say hi to the chat really quick. I'm watching it on my TV. All right. I'm just saying hello to people here. All right. So what I'm going to do is we're going to continue here in a second. Um, feel free to say hello in the chat. Ask me a question, perhaps, if you want about anything we talked about today. And then what I'm going to do, and smash that like button, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys something really quick that I want to talk about, make sure I get to here. Okay, if you like my lessons over here on YouTube, you're going to love the courses I have over on my website because I have over 20 courses designed to help you learn more, not just about piano, but music theory, improvisation, rhythm, ear training, and so much more. Anything basically I thought that you would need to become a well-rounded musician. This is all the stuff that's been passed along to me throughout my experiences taking piano lessons, going to music school, and even teaching myself and, and things that I've learned doing that. Um, so you can, basically these are great if you are either a beginner that needs a solid foundation to build on. So either you just found out about me or you just need a really good review of the basics. I have courses that will really help you out with that. Um, or if you have some experience already and you're looking to take things to that next level because I have also have courses on stuff that I've never covered on the channel or haven't covered in nearly as much detail. Kind of in that vein also I want to mention that not only do you get instructional videos similar to the ones you see here on the channel, but you also get accompanying notes, worksheets, real sheet music to play, and assignments to really help you not just like learn something and move on, but learn something in a video and then have the opportunity to practice it and master it as well. And I'm especially bringing this up right now because there is a spring sale going on right now. All of my course packs are discounted and it ends April 4th. 
which let me show you more about the course packs. So what I recommend um, is you pick up um, courses in pa the packages. You can s enroll in courses individually if you want, but you'll get a much better deal, especially with this sale, buying them in a pack. And you know, the great thing also is that it helps keep them organized a bit more. Oh, let me show you. I accidentally changed the view here. So the course packages, you can buy courses in um, a set of packages. And the great thing about these is not only will you get a better price on them, but you there, it's also an easier way to organize the courses. So if you're a beginner just starting out, you can check out the beginner's pack. Again, if you just found out about me or you just want a good review of the basics, this is where you're going to want to start. Um, and you can click on each individual course to see more in detail on what it covers, uh, what you need to know ahead of time what kind of pieces you're going to be learning, and a general guideline on how long it's going to take you to finish the course. This depends uh, greatly, basically, on what type of person you are, how fast you pick this stuff up. So mileage will vary on that, but that's just a general guideline, I think, that most people will fit into. Okay, um, as you can see, there's intermediate and advanced packs. Um, so if you've seen a lot of my stuff or you consider yourself um, more of an intermediate player, or advanced player, you should check out these. They're a bit more expensive, but they come with nine courses, so there's quite a lot here to keep you learning for some time, and a very nice balance of subjects as well, because like I say, you're not gonna be just learning piano, but theory, rhythm, ear training, and all that other stuff. And then of course, you can get the all course access, which is also actually discounted the most right now. So you might wanna check that out if you kinda just want the whole shabille, and make sure you have access to everything that you need and of course you can read more about me down there so uh, sale ends april 4th so make sure to check it out right now because like i said if you like my stuff and you want to support the channel at the same time it's a great way to invest both in your own music education and um, the channel here as well which is very much appreciated so go to piano lessons on the .com and take a look at the sale i have of course my allergies are back oh they're bad today for some reason. <coughs> uh, I think I need to vacuum. That always seems to help take some of it out of the air. Uh, can I name the specific books? Great question here. Um, can I name the specific books of Hannon and Cherney? Yes. And Fuddy Duddy, by the way. I haven't had you in the lesson for a while, Fuddy Duddy. I'm glad to have you back. Probably from... Um, Still fairly cold Bangor, Maine, but not as cold as maybe a month ago. Uh, okay, in the lesson, let me show you here, full screen, um, or in the description, rather, of this video, you can go to lesson resources in the description. I'm doing this more with newer videos. Um, even some of the older videos have this, uh, where you have lesson resources. And the Hannon you can find right here all the exercises for free, and the Cherney School of Velocity you can um, find right there. Link to my website and subscribe are also usually in the description as well. Bless me, Tim, says the Burr 101 and Jeremy. Jeremy gave me a super chat. I missed it earlier. Um, but thank you so much for your support, Jeremy. $10 super chat. Uh, this, Tim is a great teacher. Sorry about the name confusion. Well, that's all right. Like I said, I don't mind if you call me Timmy. I just, uh, you know, everybody has their preference on what they want to go by. Tim sounds more professional. So I try to always walk the line of being professional yet being um, approachable and friendly at the same time. All right. Um, hello from warming up Bangor, Maine. <laughs> so I think you said that even before I said that. That's funny. Hi, Tim. What's the best way to choose which fingerings for a piece? Do you, as an experienced player, run through the sheets and write them out? Um, in uh, more difficult pieces, yes. Or more difficult sections. If it's something with like a scale run, I usually don't because the fingering is going to be the same as what you do for your scale. So one tip I have for you is learn all your scales with the appropriate fingering. It will not let you down. Um, and then... Uh, with scales, it's easier to adhere to the fingering roll. So basically, you just said, you know, I should always read the rest of the question before I respond because 
sometimes they answer it. But yeah, and and yes, um, your other part of the question is, does it just come with experience? Yes, it does. It definitely does. And sometimes you'll even have to experiment around um, to find a fingering that works for you. But like I said, the whole goal is to not run out of fingers. So like the scale is the perfect example, right? So if I use just any old fingering to do the scale, I'm not gonna be able to complete it without rolling my hand over, which kids seem to think that they can do, but it's like, no, you, and when you're playing piano, your palms should never be facing up. Although somebody pointed out a time when they could be, that made sense to me, but 99% of the time your palms should not be facing this way. <laughs> Just like that. All right. Um, so question answer time. I'm just going to kind of look through here to see if I missed any questions. Uh, you're awesome at piano. Live rock, says Dodgy. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Uh, the bird slammed uh, their finger on the house door. Oh, I hate that. I haven't done that in a long time, but I know that that's – it sucks. Let's see. Jace here. Sorry, I should get the chat back in here. Uh, hello, everybody. Hey, Tim, says Jace. Hello. Beautiful day from Germany. Uh, Laredo says, good evening, Tim and fellow students. I trust that all of you are well. I am. Yippee. I have finally made it out to the new time slot after missing out on Friday's lesson to the power outage. I remember that. I think you said that in the comments, if I remember. Theoretically, musical is here. Hello, Mr. Ventura is back from the Dominican Republic. Uh, B is here. Hello, B, or Bay. Roxanne is here once again. i uh, just saying hello to our wonderful collection. Well, I shouldn't call you a collection. Wonderful students, classroom of students. Um, i just like to say hi to everybody. I know some people that turns off and they wish I would just teach for the entire hour. Um, but there's a bunch of reasons against that. One, I really like just conversing with all of you. So I like to start out the lesson teaching, and then I like to have time to talk with all of you. Actually, that's where some of the best lesson ideas come from um, are from you guys. Abhishek, hello, welcome out here. Glad to see you're watching on TV. Allergies do suck, I agree. They are not cool. You know, when I, when I was a little kid, I never had allergies. So anytime somebody um, had them, I didn't understand. That's weird. Yeah, the, sorry, the Cherney School Velocity page is down. I feel like maybe I didn't get it all. Oh, I was missing a, like a parentheses or something. Um, Cherney, here you go. Sorry, just put like a, um, a closing parentheses at the end. Although it should have had it, right? Um, sorry, I'm inspecting this link now because it's important that the links do work. Yeah, I don't know why um, I posted the link right. But anyway, just click on it and then put a clothing's parentheses. Okay, let's take a look here. Um, we got... Jeremy, you're welcome, no problem. All right. Uh, this is a good time to conduct your live online video, says Fuddy Duddy, 1 p.m. EST. Yeah, so you're on EST as well. I agree, it's a great, it's way better for me. I have so much more energy than I would at 8 p.m. And then it also lets me have an opportunity to edit the video when we're done. So then I don't have to push it off to the next day where I already have a lot of things going on. So it's really cool that way. I actually have a lot of the videos for next week already ready to go, like thumbnails done, editing done, which is great. That'll allow me to work uh, better on next week's stuff. Uh, okay, while some other questions and comments are rolling in, one thing I want to point out to everybody is over my website again. If you go to the community tab at the sp top of the page, and you're interested in attending on a regular basis. Man, I really need to fix the text there. 1 p.m. Eastern is when we're meeting now. Um, fill out this form, and you're going to get an email reminder 30 minutes.
before we meet. And uh, more importantly is if you scroll down here, you get a calendar of what we're talking about and when. So we're meeting again um, next Friday and next Sunday uh, where I'm going to be talking about making your piano pieces sound amazing using articulations. These are all the little details of music beyond the notes that make it what it is. So if you're interested in making your pieces sound better, check that out. And then on Sunday, I'm going to be sharing my process for learning a piece. And then the following Friday, we have the left hand training routine, which I think a lot of you will like since a lot of you are right handed. And um, the student showcase on the 31st. I don't know if we'll have it. I might just do a double double up on the next month um, because I haven't had a lot of submissions. Um, if you feel like submitting a recording, basically, if you don't know, the student showcase is where I review recordings of our students. You know, uh, what I like about what you're doing and maybe some ways on you, you can improve. Send your submissions to Tim at LessonsOnTheWeb.com. Or you can um, send me a message over on Facebook through our Facebook page, um, the Piano Lessons on the Web Facebook page. Any songbooks you recommend for beginner to intermediate? Um, yeah, I recommend the Alfred... Alfred Adult series. Let me get you a link here. Or let me show you. So this is called the Alfred Adult series. Now they do have some collections where there's a bunch of different stuff all in one book, but the ones I use are the this like pink one right here. I use this for a lot of beginner adult students because the great thing about that one is it starts out with really easy stuff like five finger exercises and then it works up to you're playing like by the end of the book the entertainer um you're playing like um have yourself a merry little christmas the theme to gilligan's island which everybody knows i'm just kidding like half the people know anybody over 30 will know what that is um anyway the alfred's basic adult level two that's a green book so get the, all three books get the pink one the green one and wherever the blue one is the level there's a level three that's like a light blue here it is Grab those three. You can get them on Amazon or just about anywhere. Okay, would I have to watch all your videos to understand this live stream? I'm a new learner. Probably not. I mean, the thing about being uh, brand new and uh, attending the live streams is I would still recommend watching the latest live stream. Even if you're just starting out and you might not understand everything in it. Um, and that is because you're going to pick out things. You're still going to be able to pick out something you can apply to what you're learning right now. Also, as you learn more and more, you'll think back and you'll be like, oh, yeah, Tim said this you know, a while ago. Like he was talking about scales in that one live stream and now I'm learning scales and I'm there. So I'm going to either check back with that or I'm going to remember what he said. So I still recommend watching them. If you're brand new here on the channel, let me show you something um, and get you a link here. I always like getting you a link if possible. Um, so hold on. Okay, hold on. Now I'm thinking about changing up the channel page here and reorganizing it a bit. But anyway, um, if you scroll down on the main channel page, I think youtube.com slash lessons on the web will take you here. Oh, hey, that's us right now. Um, and if you scroll down, you can find this section called Recommended Order of Lessons for Beginners. So um, you can either click on one of these playlists or you just click on here. And it will show you a list of playlists I recommend you start with. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you a link here. I'm going to paste it into the chat for you. There you go. Uh, Mogsay says, I'm loving it. Glad you are. B 
beautiful keyboard and is also a new KB1 amp made by PV. Well, good. It's always glad to hear, uh, really exciting to hear whenever anybody gets a new instrument. Okay, Tim is the man teaching this stuff to us. Thank you so much. So anybody else have any comments or questions? If not, we'll probably end a little bit early because um, I don't really have anything else to teach you today on the books. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any other announcements other than the spring sale, which is going on right now until April 4th over on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com. We now meet... Fridays, wait, 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 Fridays and Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So just those two things, keep note of that. Did you bring some water to sip? Box of tissues may be handy too. I agree. The only thing is if I'm going to use a tissue, I'd rather walk out of frame just because I don't like blowing my nose on camera. Um, I don't know. I same thing in front of people. If I if I can help it, if I can't help it, then whatever. Um, but I don't know. I just thought that that, that kind of thing was just kind of gross. <laughs> the water, no, I did not bring water though. I should. It's not as hot today though, so it's not quite as bad. Uh, do you recommend the all-in-one Alfred books or the normal ones? I would get the normal ones. I mean, those ones are I'm just more familiar with. Um, the all-in-ones are fine, but they mix in like a lot of additional stuff. Uh, but those are good too, though. I've worked through one of those before. So either one, but the ones I showed you, you know, I could vouch for those 100%. Any pan pianos you recommend that don't cost a lot? No. Um, well, like sort of. Let me, uh, let me kind of think here. Let me bring up Amazon. Um, I don't know about any pianos that don't cost a lot. Um, as far as keyboards go, um, what is that? Alessis? Yeah. So if you want a cheap keyboard so you just don't have a lot of money and you're looking for an instrument to play on, you will want to check out um, the Alessis Recital 88 key keyboard. Now, I've never played on this, but I've heard good things about it for the price. Um, if you have like, if you have at least five, six hundred, I would go for something like this Yamaha here, uh, the P125. Uh, I have, I don't know if I've played on. I've played uh, on similar models though. But anyway, a lot of the Yamaha lines in this price point are usually pretty good. But if you're looking for something really cheap, um, the Alessis 88 key isn't bad. It has semi-weighted keys where they're like kind of spring-loaded more than weighted, I think, which isn't super ideal. But like I said, you can't really beat it for that price. Anything below that price or at that price a lot of times is just really junk, um, like really cheap plastic keys you're not going to get much out of. So that's what I recommend. In, in terms of cheap pianos, uh, what I would do is maybe look at Craigslist or some sort of local listing. You're going to be able to find sometimes if you look long enough somebody that's in a hurry to move and they just want to get rid of their piano and that's it. Or they might even give you the piano for free if you pay to take it. So that's what I recommend if you want a piano for free. All right. The Yamaha PSR S670 any good? Um, probably. If it has 88 weighted keys, it's probably pretty good. All right. Um, just give me a second, folks. I'm going to go get a little drink of water, kind of like rinse out my eyes a little bit. The allergies are bugging me a little bit. So I'll be back um, in less than five minutes, probably. Let's just, just say two minutes. I'll be back.
Okay, I'm back. All right, here we go. Ugh, yes, yeah, stand by. Okay, there's... Excuse me. Uh, there seems to be quite a jumping level in between beginner and intermediate... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> pieces. I feel kind of stuck between things. Way too easy or way too hard. Is there anything in between? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, you know what? Like, what, uh, I don't know if you were here on Friday. Who is this? Uh, Jace is asking this question. Um, yeah, you know what? Let me find something for you. The lesson we had on Friday, I had... Yeah, let me bring it up. I'll just give you a link. Because the lesson on Friday, I talked about that a little bit on, on what you can do. Um, here we go. What I recommend you do, let's go to this link here. Right there. And then let me bring this up so I can show all of you. Okay, if you go to the link I sent you, uh, makingmusicfun.net. I talked about this a little bit on Friday. No, yeah, yeah, Friday. Um, in that there's a whole listing of easy piano pieces that are like things you've heard before. So there's Prelude in E minor um, by Chopin. You got Amazing Grace, everything like that. And then there's levels here on the side. So what you want to do is you want to go through and learn all the level ones. That's probably the real beginner stuff. And then you want to try something like in the level two. You know, it gets a little bit harder. You know, I wouldn't say that this is an intermediate piece, um, but it's definitely not at the very beginning either. So go through these and learn these in the levels that they're listed here until you get up to level five. And that's going to help give you a pretty good selection of things to work on that's not just going to jump from real easy to more difficult right away. There's also multiple pages here. So quite a good selection to learn from. Um, you know, and then let's see what like a level five is like. I have a feeling this will be closer to um, something a little bit more in the intermediate range. Yeah, so these never get real hard, but there's definitely a lot here that's going to help you transition from that beginner to the intermediate. So check those out. Okay, um, it's okay. I like it says GB says the P about the P125B. Uh, Fight Daddy Williams piano for two ninety nine. Okay. Okay, everybody's recommending pianos. Uh, thanks for your tips and advice. I found them really helpful. Glad to hear it. Commercial break. Yes, we are back. Hey Tim, I need a song recommendations for a recital. I already asked twice, but I will keep asking until you see it. Well, thank you very much, Bird. Um, I do appreciate that because as I'm scrolling down, sometimes I miss them. And um, so, I, well, it depends the bird. Um, like, where are you at? Um, PewDiePie, before I answer this, somebody asked PewDiePie or T-Series. PewDiePie, of course. Pewds all the way. A T-Series, get out of here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's kind of a trivial thing, but I do like PewDiePie. Uh, let's see here. Um... It, yeah, that depends. Uh, recommendations for recital. See, the thing is, like, I don't know exactly where you're at. And I think you submitted something for the student showcase. But honestly, I don't remember uh, what everybody played. Um, I don't know. Like, for release, I guess, would be pretty good. That one's not bad. Uh, Prelude in C major by Bach. This one's not bad. Um, Recital Hall is a little church. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. Like, that's... <laughs> Wish I had more I could uh, recommend to you, but I really don't know, like, what you're capable of or what you're trying to go for. Um, you know, you can learn another Prelude by Bach or something like that. So, really any of those would be fine. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Because cause that's just a loaded question. It's like, I could recommend pretty much anything, right? Um, so, like, Moonlight Sonata... Or anything like that. Chopin. Um, you know what? You might want to learn some Chopin preludes. I've been learning those. Um, let me see if I can bring those up. And we'll talk about those for a second. Yeah, again, it depends on your your playing level. Which I'm just not really sure what you can get and, and how much time you have. So there's a lot of factors here. Um, so I can only comment so much. But anyway, um, Chopin preludes are great. difficult um, there's a really easy one E minor and these are pretty fairly well known So I really like that one. That one you could get ready. So that's called the pre, uh, Prelude in E Minor by Chopin. What about Prelude in C? I mentioned that one. Canon in D. Oops, whatever it is. I don't know. It's been a while since I played it. Um... Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm not going to play that. I'm not a jukebox, guys. Just to let you know that. I can't just be like, meh. Okay, here we go. Okay. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Hungarian Rhapsody is awesome. I like that one. That one's good. Best online resource for learning piano, piano lessons on the web .com, by far. All right, everybody. Um, Prelude in C major is that what it's called? Yeah, Prelude in C major from the well-tempered clavier, and this is by J. S. Bach. Yep, that one's good. And then the prelude in E minor um, by Chopin. Those should be fairly easy to find, I would think. Uh, Guarav, no, the website is not free. Um, the YouTube channel is. Oh my goodness, loaded question by, by Jace. Uh, Jace says, uh, how long on average would it take to go from beginner to list? I, I don't know. That is such, there's so many variables in there. Year, probably years. Well, playing hands together for an average student works suddenly, like riding a bicycle. Or is it an ongoing process forever that hopefully gets better and better? Uh, the latter of the two. 
yeah, it doesn't really work suddenly, I don't think. I mean, there's probably a point where you struggle a lot, and then you kind of get over a hill, and then you're like, oh, you know, I can do this. Yeah, so that a little bit is like riding a bike, but yeah, it's something that you're progressively going to get better at. Uh, Avi says... Uh, I recently started watching your videos from starting, and to be honest, a cap looks better on you. I agree. I agree. I like the uh, the hat. <clears throat> How much you grade the difficulty of Rhapsody, Fuego, and other types of classical? Oh my god. <laughs> There's a certain order that these can be achieved. You know what, Michael? I'm going to have to make a lesson just on that. I made a lesson on Friday that was a list of like beginner stuff for beginners to start from beginning to end. I would have to really think about that and list them out. So I can't do that now. All right, everybody. I think we're going to conclude here. Um, I'm going to stay around for another minute or so. Make sure you like the lesson if you liked it. Um, let me think about an outro to do, and then we're going to wrap her up after that. All right, here we go. If you're digging the lessons, make sure you smash that subscribe button. You have all notifications turned on because we have new lessons coming out all the time. You don't want to miss a beat. Make sure you check out some of the other lessons around the channel. I'm going to put one right here about being getting better at two-handed piano playing. So anyway, your piano teacher Tim here, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Okay, so I'm still here for now. I just did that, so I want to piece the video together. All right, thanks, GB, for smashing that like button. Uh, a side question. With your current setup, are you planning to remake your own videos? Um, sort of. Um, that's a good question, Avi. Um, the answer is sort of, <laughs> not, not like one for one, like, oh, I'm going to update just this video. If there's a video that I felt had a lot of potential that I released before and I can do a better version of it now, um, you're probably going to see a little bit of that, but I don't want to get too much into that because I'd rather branch out into newer territory for the most part. I do like to revisit something every once in a while. So the, the, the answer is like kind of in the middle. Like, yeah, you're going to see some redos of certain things, but um, I don't want the channel all to be like that. Laredo says, Tim, you forgot to respond to my question. Well, I didn't even see it. Uh, you forgot how often does the content of the courses get updated and how do we get to check to see, find out was recently recent lessons. Uh, updated or added you know that's something I'm gonna have to add in there like a, a what's new kind of thing um, I'm actually working on I really I'm having struggle working out my schedule right now to add more content to the courses so I wish I had a better response for you like all the time but that's just not happening right now um, it, it depends like if a course if there's a big problem with a course it's more likely to get updated um, so, I mean, you have unlimited access to the course anyway, so it's not like you're, you're going to run out of time to get access to the course. But I do understand that you probably want to see new stuff added up in there, especially if you sign up for the all-course access. So I'm going to try to do better on it, to be honest with you. I can't give you a definite answer right now. Um, but having an idea like uh, maybe like a login page that tells you what's new um, would probably be a good idea. So, yeah, I'll have to check that out. And sorry for missing your question before. Like I said, I just get so many um, so many questions now. I just can't get to every single one. So, sorry about that. Uh, is 61 key keyboard, is that good for learning for beginners? Um, eh, if you're just starting out, it's probably okay. But I would upgrade if you can. Thanks, Tim. I enjoy it. It says Fuddy Duddy. You're very welcome, Fuddy. Uh, Rich, damn it, I missed the stream. Well, sorry about that. You'll have to catch us back on Friday. Uh, better than missing a date with your wife. I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, okay. 
please make a playlist of main piano topics, including basics. I do. <laughs> I pointed it out so many times. <laughs> I, I, I even told you earlier in the lesson. I'm sorry to grill you on this, but it's like, please look at the channel. All right, anyway, sorry about that. I was just kind of irritated because I, I literally brought that up like a little while ago. Uh, Jeremy says, yeah, as a beginner, it is good to have what you've got and the budget, but then uh, go up as you go along. Yeah, Avi said he has everything in one place. Just go to the channel and you'll find a playlist for beginners. Yep. <laughs> yes, please look. Like, I don't mind answering questions, but I don't like answering the same question literally like a thousand times. All right, everybody, I'm cashing out for today. Uh, it was fun being with you. I really enjoy this time a lot better for me, 1 p.m. Eastern. So check us out on Friday. I'll see you back then again. Um, all right, everybody, thanks for coming by today. And good to see your human tin. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Jace. Anyway, thanks, everybody, for coming by today. And have a great week, and I'll see you again on Friday.